probably the toughest that I've ever in my life, like in terms of not being able to do what I wanted to do, play football, it's all I've ever done. So definitely the toughest period of my life. It's just one of them things really, like you get injuries and you don't never expected for one minute that I'd go on for this long, but I just I knew it was quite bad where I couldn't carry on the game and I never really thought about any any more than that. I just knew I couldn't continue and then the days after that then I found out it's a couple of months and then it kinda gets longer and longer. So he sustained obviously the Rangers game, sustained a stamp on the foot with contact with Alfredo Morales and Basically, the joint between the big toe onto the tarsal. Um, you've got ligaments, obviously, that attach bone to bone, and he's ruptured one of those little ligaments. Um, so, stability of the joint just, just goes, and obviously, a lot of pain associated with that as well. I still don't really know for certain what happened to this day, but what mm -hmm. I think happened is I've obviously kicked the bottom of someone's foot, and then I've went to play a pass, and it's completely gone. But it went like it was. I was in so much pain. It just felt like I knew something was wrong. Where like my foot didn't feel right, and as I played on, I just couldn't continue. And I think it pop, popped out of the corner, and I just sat down, and I knew I had to come off. With a lot of kind of foot contact injuries, with stamps and that, it's normally just a lot of pain and a lot of kind of soft tissue bruising and soreness. Um, so when you see someone limping off. Normally you're not thinking, oh, you've ligaments ruptured. With an ankle, you're thinking, okay, ligaments might be in danger, but not so much with the toe or the foot. But when we got him inside and just checked him, you could see straight away that the joint is quite lax, and that's kind of a sign that the stability is gone and the ligament is ruptured. It looked pretty innocuous at the time, if I'm being honest. We've seen so many contacts where uh, people would clear a ball and maybe catch the, the sole of somebody else's boot. So I think for that point of view, we felt it was maybe just a, an impact injury. Um, and then to find out the extent of, of the injury was, it was a bit, I suppose, soul destroying for us as much as, as Tom because he, he really looked as if he'd caught fire and it looked as if he was he was becoming that mainstay in our team. So disappointment all round and probably weren't expecting this cycle that there's been almost a year on. It's a hard one as well because I've obviously spent a lot of time with Tom, uh, bringing him up here and uh, the period of time he's up here and I've uh, he's somebody that I've really, really enjoyed working with. So I think there's always that wee bit of a, a personal touch on it as well um, when you realise how bad it is and the, and the recovery he's going to have to go through. Um, so I think first and foremost, when you see somebody at that point in their career where they look as if they're, they're going to make big strides, um, then it is a setback. But I think sometimes those setbacks can be uh, turned into a positive and really give you that drive to, to go on in your career. It's, it's quite a comprehensive uh, kind of rehab. So initially it was going to be conservative treatment, so no surgery. And that needed a period of maybe three months to see if he could work that out. Um, so that brought him up to February time, January time, February time. Um, and then wasn't really getting better so then we needed to go down the surgery route. Again we, we always try and give these guys uh, a clear pathway of what the recovery is. I think if you know, you know, somebody tells you you're going to be out for six weeks, you, you realise that in your head and you normally try and shave a week or two off that if you possibly can. And I think in Tom's case we, we thought that there might have been a short term fix or a or, a, or certainly a shorter fix than, than what there's been and it seemed to add on layers. I think it's quite a complex injury um, from my knowledge of it. Um, and, and I think from that perspective it's, it's not an injury we've dealt with here at the football club before however it has to be said he's had the top level of expertise where the specialist he's been to see and the care he's had with the football club it just so happens that there has been a heck of a lot of um, real misfortune along the way I think it was almost a week until I got my scan results back and stuff like that and then you find out that it's two to three months and obviously trying to be positive trying not to I like expect the expect the worst, but I'll be positive about the outcome and it takes a couple of days to get over that. But then I, I've had an injury before, similar time-wise, so I knew I could get the rehab out the way and I'll be on the pitch in all time. So I was just stay positive and just concentrate on your rehab in the gym. What happens is, so you've got the two bits of bone and you've got a ligament connecting the two of them, and that's just been ruptured, so it's torn and come away. 
So it just basically involves suturing that back together. Um, it's not it's not very uh, complicated in procedure wise, but it's just where it is. So everything you do, you have to load through the foot and load through the toe, so you can't avoid it. Um, everything you do through it is weight bearing. So it's kind of the area where the injury occurs is kind of the more difficult part as opposed to the, the surgery itself. Or it was one of the hardest times where I've, I've been out, I think it was four months, and then someone tell you you need an operation and you need to go through the same thing again. I just feel like you've wasted four months of my career, like, so, like, so far, and yeah, that was definitely one of the toughest, toughest parts, but you know, I knew I was going to get sorted, so I, I was I was hopeful like I could cut the time down and hopefully get back sooner than expected because I'd done all the rehab and knew what I had to do and yeah, just get me out down it early and after a few days then you're fine and you concentrate on getting back. I'm going to be honest with you again and um, probably expose a wee bit of information and I know we're, we're going to talk about them and, and, and obviously show the, the journey he's been on in the last year or so but um, there's there's been some really really challenging times for him. Um, we've had to we've had to help him as much along the way as we possibly can. You throw in COVID, you throw in the lockdown during an important period for his injury. Um, the setbacks, we've had a few setbacks in recent months as well. Um, and when you see how much it means to to, to Tom and um, what he wants to do is play for this football club and put himself out there and show that he can play in my team. Um, I think when you see those setbacks, it's gut wrenching for for me. Um, it's gut wrenching for somebody that that's quite clearly a talent and, and has a bright future. Just before I, I left to go home before lockdown, I found out that I had an infection. So I, t- I got antibiotics from Dingwall and. I took them and throughout lockdown like the infection didn't go but I couldn't go and see anyone. I had my auntie back at home who was a podiatrist. She was trying to help me but it was hard, like I couldn't I was FaceTiming people showing them but there's not much they can like see on FaceTime so it was only until I got the infection in March and the infection only went the end of May. So the whole time I couldn't like do any exercise or stuff like that. So I'm thinking what oh, shape I'm gonna be and when I come back and stuff like that, but I think I kept myself in quite good nick. And when I started running that, when I come back up, I was surprised myself really that I, it didn't take me that long to get where I wanted to get. Play your part in producing tomorrow's stars of the Staggies with an Academy Player Sponsorship Package for Season 2020-21. First Team Future Success relies on your support to nurture players like current number 43, Josh Reed. For more information on how you can assist the Football Academy in developing the next generation of Ross County, contact gordon.duff at rosscountyfootballclub.co.uk today. When I hold the card, I'm standing with my family. When I hold the card, I'm standing with my teammates. When I hold the card, I'm standing with my neighbours. When I hold the card, I stand with my brothers and sisters. We're standing with everyone who's had to endure racial prejudice in their lives. Racism, Racism comes, comes in many forms, forms, some clear, some more subtle. It affects not just the victim, but friends, families and entire communities. No one is born with it, and tolerance is taught, but it can be untaught. To bring about change, we can't be afraid to take the first step we feel when we fail to try. We are supporting Show Racism the Red Card, our education charity. Now more than ever, they need your support to give our future generation the tools to challenge prejudice, hatred and discrimination. It's not enough to be not racist, we all must be anti-racist. Education is the key. Support the Staggies and sponsor your favourite player for the 2020-21 season. Sponsorship includes listing on the club's website's player profile, meet your favourite player at an exclusive meet and greet event at the end of the season, receive their top, boots or gloves framed, sponsor a home or away kit for £300, both for £500, boots for just £220 and gloves for only £200. For more information, get in touch. Obviously, with an injury like this, 
professional athletes, you need a lot of one-on-one -on -one kind of contact time. And Tom basically just lost all that when we went into lockdown. So yeah, so physical help, access to facilities, just kind of coaching through the injury, progression of exercises, a lot of that was kind of lost and kind of not progressed, so kind of a bit stagnant. And yeah, and just kind of got to do what we could do at home, which took away a lot of the facilities we have here on site. When and I found out that the infection, like, I had to go back on antibiotics. They told me not to exercise at all. So I literally just, I went leaving the house, couldn't go on walks and stuff like that. So I was literally just in the house watching telly, like most people were at that time. But yeah, that's, it was, it was tough, but I'm glad I was, I was dying to get back up here and like be around the lads, like doing my rehab in the gym. Like, I don't like the gym at times, but I was just, I was trying to get back in the gym just to do some kind of exercise. I think when you were healthy, uh, anybody that was a healthy football player would have found it a, an extremely challenging period or any industry. Um, so when you have that lingering injury, um, when it's at a point where you should be receiving hands-on care, then um, I think that tells you it just compounds the, the sort of misery that you, you feel during that period. I've spoken to him um, several times, we managed to pick him up and it was it was good that he was in amongst his family, he was back down in Liverpool and amongst the, as many people that wanted to try and help him out as well, so um, there were positives to it but I know that Tom was anxious to be back in the Highlands and, and, and getting that treatment that he required but obviously we all know that that wasn't possible during a period of lockdown. It's just a kind of a, it's in a bad spot so you have when you have pain in it, you can't basically, if you have a sore shoulder, you can still get all your cardio in your running and stuff like that. But you have to avoid a lot of the cardio stuff when you have a sore foot because you just can't load through it. Um, so you can kind of detrain a lot more quicker than you can with other injuries. So when he has an issue with his toe, we have to come off it a bit and we kind of lose time that way as well. Well, I was flying like, I, I think it was a month before Willie, really said I was going to be back, but we ticked all the boxes, like I was running, I could pass the ball, all fine and that, and I was back in my first full session and something just, just kind of went and not, we didn't really know what it was, and then we got an x-ray and there was just a piece of bone that come off, which was weird, but the surgeon said it'd be fine just to, in a couple of weeks, just carry on and it'll kind of go away itself, so that was good news, like it could have been so much worse, so yeah, it was... It was hard, but not on that I'd been through before. Like it was probably the easiest setback I could have got. So I was, I went too down about that. I knew I was only a few weeks away from getting back out there. Well, but it's just about coming off and then building back up again, um, and just educating himself as well. So it's about kind of pain education as well. So it doesn't feel the same as the other toe, and it might feel different for the rest of his career. But as long as we've no pain and we're functioning then that's just, that's just his new normal for that, that joint. So just educating him along that as well. And sensations aren't necessarily pain, but don't feel like they used to feel, just coaching him through that and letting him reassure him that everything's okay and everything's okay to drive on with his rehab. Gets to a stage where you, you start thinking it's gonna end. Like, it's unbelievable, like it's been 11 months. Like, the lowest seems like so long of being out of football. Like, Seems like we were playing angels on the pitch like yesterday, like, it's unbelievable, but yeah, it's 100% like mentally, physically trying to keep myself in shape, no, not knowing when I'm going to be back playing, it's definitely 100% being the toughest. Yeah. And I think just from his perspective at times, I think he's wondered whether it was going to, whether it was going to happen, whether he was going to get his next opportunity, but Again, I've been out there this morning and I've watched him and um, he's got that smile back in his face and you can see he's got that real hunger to be playing the game again, which I always knew would return, but it's hard to tell the person at that point of um, real adversity that that's going to come. So um, first and foremost, it, it's just important that he's healthy, uh, healthy both mentally and physically and then everything else will fall into place for him. There's no doubt about that. Obviously, if you or I get an injury, it's, it might be inconvenient, but we can still go about our day and go about our duties and get paid, and it's, it's not the end of the world, but this is their livelihood, so it's your paycheck at the end of the week, so it can have, obviously, a mental stress as well. Um, with Tom, so we had the initial conservative treatment, 
didn't work again that can be kind of hard to take went down the surgery route and recovering and then we got locked down again not ideal either so he's had kind of a a few hardships along the way as well um and then coming out of when we came back in after lockdown progressed his rehab he was going really well and we've had one or two setbacks since then nothing serious um but again it's always probably in his head that is it ever going to get right because looking at since last december we're coming up to 10 9 10 months that period so from initial prognosis of maybe 12 weeks it might be hard to take um but again it's a complicated injury it's not very common um and everything goes through the foot so you can't avoid it so it can take a lot of time basically i think you know when myself and stephen were co-managers there was a there was a setback and i know tom was upset and he was was really distraught and i remember stephen walking him off the pitch at the time i think i may have been taking a drill um, and we had another one out there where um, where Richie Britton was taking a session uh, and I've taken him off the pitch during one of the setbacks and walked him up to the physio room and he, he, he genuinely will feel as if he's, his world's ended but um, like I say, knowing him so well and having that relationship from bringing him through development squad, getting him into that first team environment, you can probably show that wee bit of tough love as well, you know, you can, uh, you, you can be cruel to be kind. Um, and I think a couple of times Tom's probably needed that wee bit just to uh, just to make him feel better and, and have an understanding. The most important role for me was to tell him that the football club was 100% behind him. You know, we've signed him on a new deal whilst he was injured. And again, I think that tells everybody what we think he is and what we think he can become. Um, so that's been the most important factor for me to, to make him aware that the football club wants him and the, 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 that I have a plan for him where I believe he can go. Um, and I think he has understood that and I think that that's something that potentially has kept him going um, but I'll stress again his teammates have been been massive in that process as well um, they all appreciate him he's won them over it's been a year since we've seen him play um, but these guys still know what they uh, they had witnessed prior to his injuries yeah that will my family even when I was on the lockdown like my auntie was helping me with my scar and all that uh, Willie the physio he's been brilliant since he's come in and got the job the players that I've been injured with, they, they know probably the most what I've been through, so they definitely like, keep my spirits high and just the staff in general, like, I'm, I'm up here by myself, so like, the people here, the, all I see, like the, everyone at the club, so I'll definitely like, look after me, make sure I'm, I'm sound and yeah, the club have been brilliant early. Players want to be playing, if they're not on the team, they're worried about it, if they're injured and they can't train, they're worried about it. Um, and then if you have like a long-term injury again, it's always going to creep into your head is, am I going to play again? How is it going to affect my earnings? So it's only natural. Um, but Tom's been quite good. Um, very open to what I've been telling him, very open to what the staff have been telling him. Um, and for such a long layoff with what initially wasn't going to be such a long layoff, I think he's coped quite well with it. But yeah, there's always going to be kind of challenges and ups and downs along the way. But that's the same with everybody, I think. Um, and there's been a pathway for him. I think Willie Nolan here as the physio has, has, has been great with, with, with Tom and I think it's important that they have a, a personal relationship when you're, when, you're, when you're trying to get through that long period of being out and absent for the game. It's important that you've got somebody in your corner and somebody that's really working to, to try and get you back and I think that Tom will tell you himself, well he's been that for him. I think fundamentally for me, I know Tom really, really well as a lad um, and it's just been important for, for me and the staff here to keep his spirits up as much as we possibly can. And I think it's, uh, it tells you something about the football club as well. I've seen some of the guys in the uh, in our squad distraught when uh, when he has had a setback or it looks as if he's down, um, but they've been brilliant for him. Um, Tom's a younger guy, but he certainly keeps company with all age groups throughout the squad and, and these guys have really been pushing him hard as well and being in his corner. And when you have that, I don't believe you can fail. You learn about your mental life. You have to be resilient. So you don't want the setbacks I've had. I've learned that I'm quite resilient. Uh, just to come every day with a positive mindset, like it's so easy to just be down. But like people, like I've been injured with Ross Draper for the large part of my injury, and just having good people around you, maybe family, like Willie the physio, everyone at the club being brilliant with me. So definitely keep good people around you. They like, keep you positive, and just have that positive attitude yourself, and you'll get get to your end goal. This has to be your driver for the, re the rest of your career. Um, I've spoken about it in my own career. I think that 
I've experienced a, a relegation. Um, I've experienced moments as a player where you think that you can do no right. Um, and, and I think that those are the moments, and you won't see it just now, you'll look back on it in two or three years' time and, and you'll be able to tell people that that was the thing that catapulted you forward in, in your career. And I think it's so important. You can become a better athlete in different ways when you're out for such a period of time. So we'll look to that for Tom. We'll look to see if we can improve his upper body strength. You know, we're now looking at a point where we really want to improve his conditioning because we believe he can occupy a couple of different roles in our team. Just made up to be back to Ian and I just want to get a good few weeks under my belt. I'm not back. I'll obviously be out for a long time. I'm not expecting to come back and be the player I was 11 months ago. I think that you have to cast your mind back and he won't know it now um, and he won't understand it now probably but this is a bit that will strengthen him for the rest of his career and probably at no point will it ever get any worse than, than what it's been in stages this last year so um, you realise what you've got when you're playing and you know that when, every day you go on that pitch that it's a, a real bonus and that you should enjoy it and you should apply yourself 100% and um, so sometimes I'm a bit strange that way, sometimes I believe that this can make you a better person and it can make you a better player. Um, and I'm pretty convinced that it'll do exactly that for Tom. It's going to take a few weeks, maybe months, to get back to where I was, but definitely from a starting point of view, I'm feeling good and hopefully I'll be back and I'll be tuning up.